The acceleration of an object in uniform circular motion is called centripetal acceleration. The magnitude of centripetal acceleration is A is equal to V squared over R. In this video, I am going to derive this formula using vector components. To derive the centripetal acceleration, I am considering an object in uniform circular motion. The object moves in the clockwise direction. The speed of the object is V. Note that, speed is the magnitude of velocity, which is a constant in uniform circular motion. The radius of the circle is R. I am taking two positions of the object. This is one position and this is the other. And these two angles are the same. I take these angles as theta. The time it takes for the object to travel from here to here is the time interval delta t. The velocity of the object is tangent to the circle, so at this position, this is the velocity vector. I take this as the initial velocity, v1. And at this position, this is the velocity vector. I take this as the final velocity, v2. The magnitude of v1 is the speed. Since the speed is constant, the magnitude of v2 is also v. The object is displaced from here to here. And I take the displacement as d. Dividing the displacement by the time interval, we get the average velocity of the object. First, what we are going to do is find the average acceleration of the object over this time interval. From that we will find the instantaneous acceleration, which is the centripetal acceleration. Average acceleration, a bar, is equal to delta v over delta t. We are interested in the magnitude of acceleration. So, I take the magnitude of the change in velocity. To find delta v, we will use x and the y components of the vectors v1 and v2. I am taking the x-axis is along the displacement. The y-axis is perpendicular to the x-axis, I put that here. From the geometry of the figure, you can find that this angle is same as this angle, theta. And this angle is also theta. Next, let us draw the components of these two vectors. For this vector, this is the x component and this is the y component. And for this vector, this is the x component and this is the y component. Now, let us make a table and put the x and the y components of v1 and v2. The x component of v1 is v times cosine theta and the y component of v1 is v times sine theta. The x component of v2 is v times cosine theta and the y component is negative v times sine theta. Next, we will find the change in velocity. The x component of the change in velocity is v cosine theta minus v cosine theta is equal to zero. And the y component of the change in velocity is negative v sine theta minus v sine theta is equal to negative 2v sine theta. Now, we can find the magnitude of change in velocity using this formula. Is equal to square root of delta vx is 0 plus delta vy is negative 2v sine theta equal to 2v sine theta. So, delta v is 2v sine theta. Next, from the figure, find sine theta. Take this right triangle. From here to here it is d. So, the length of this side is half of d. So, sine theta is equal to d over 2 divided by r is equal to d over 2r. Now, substitute this for sine theta. Cancel out 2 and 2 is equal to v over r times d. Now, divide both sides by delta t. Delta v divided by delta t is equal to v over r times d over delta t. Delta v over delta t is the average acceleration, and d over delta t is average velocity. This equation is valid for any time interval. But when the time interval is small, that is when delta t approaches zero, the average acceleration becomes instantaneous acceleration and the average velocity becomes instantaneous velocity. So we can replace a bar with a and v bar with v is equal to v times v is v squared divided by r. This is the centripetal acceleration.